Kashmir in northwestern India has been an important east-west transportation center since early days. To its west stretch Gandhara and Persia, while China lay to the north. Spawned in India, Buddhism spread to China and Japan via Kashmir. Zhuang Zhang visited this place in the 7th century and studied Buddhism for two years. We, the material gathering team, are headed farther north along the route taken by Buddhism towards Ladakh, the legendary Buddhist kingdom in the great mountains of Pamir. People have been calling this road the Goat Road. It links up with a rugged road passable only by goats. The villagers found us stuck and unable to move ahead. They materialized around us from nowhere. For some unknown reason, the men push the jeep with their hands held under the cloak. Their warm-heartedness that has sustained the travelers over the Silk Road since early days is conveyed to us. Ladakh lies 440 kilometers ahead of this signpost. This is the road that traverses one of the highest terrains of the world. Since it climbs over a number of ridges, more than 4,000 meters in elevation. What is the name of this village? Likka, Likka. It is called the Likka village. And farther up into the mountains is Ladakh Leh. Well, what is that thing bulging out there? Fire is contained in it. Is fire kept in it? You have one too, and you. Everybody has one. Let me see it for a moment. <laughs> what is inside it? Charcoal. Does it warm you up? Yes. So this is what you keep under the ashes, is it? In this village, what kind of work are you doing? We make carpets. <laughs> For the half year the village is buried under snow, the people devote themselves to carpet weaving. In Kashmir, carpets are woven in tune with the shouts of the leader. This voice that sounds like singing is giving instructions for weaving complex patterns. Silk carpets require an exceptional amount of work. Even when weaving continues from 8 in the morning till 7 in the evening, the woven length is no more than 2.5 centimeters. Three or even four months are put into weaving a single carpet.
This boy is only eight years old, but he is said to be a full-fledged worker. Silk, the raw material, comes from China, while the design is Persian style, and the weavers are Indians. Kashmir carpets are a product growing out of the Silk Road. In the world of Indian Buddhism, India, the torrid earth, is likened to a muddy swamp, while the great Pamirs, the glacial peaks to the north, are likened to white lotus flowers blooming in the swamp. Ladakh is said to be a gorgeous Buddhist kingdom full of white lotus flowers. Ladakh lies far ahead. The name Ladakh means beyond the rich in Tibetan. Mountains beyond the mountain, valleys beyond the valley, there is no end to the road. Upon crossing the last ridge, we came upon a town spreading before us. It is the town of Lehe, the heart of Ladakh. The town lies at an elevation of 3,500 meters, and the oxygen content of the air is no more than half that of the flatland. The temperature between summer and winter differs as much as 60 degrees. The royal palace, nine stories high, stands on the mountainside looking down upon the town. It is a fortress built in the 16th century. Here, in this town, once converged caravans from the various countries, making it look like an international urban community in the midst of the great Pamir Mountains. Here is an old man weaving cloths in the street corner. We are told that his business is to provide a travelling weaving service. He takes himself to the house that has given him an order and weaves whatever the customer wants.
His pay is 45 rupees a day, which is equivalent to about three dollars. He's a high wage earner in Ladakh. This is a sketch left by Sven Hedin, the great explorer of Central Asia. Hedin visited this place 81 years ago in 1906. Neither people's faces nor the appearance of the town has changed, as if the flow of time has stopped. For Hedin, the town of Lehe was no more than a base camp for exploring Tibet. We were blessed with a fortunate opportunity of visiting a treasure house of Buddhist relics, which Hedin overlooked. <laughs> <laughs> he is Amchi. Amchi? He is called Amchi in our language. Is that sort of doctor still found now? Well, the village people go to the Amchi, but the town people now go to an ordinary hospital. Is there still such a thing in a town like this? Oh yes, there still is, on the left-hand side of this building. He is in there. Yes, this Amchi's name is Sion Namgyal. Is that his sign? Yes. This is his name and address. For instance, this word Taru is the name of the village. We paid a visit to a doctor known as Amji in Tibetan. In Ladakh, the village master known as Lompo, the fortune teller known as Ompo, and the doctor known as Amchi are the three top leaders most respected by the villagers. Amchi Sion prepares his medicines from the herbs he himself has gathered. Amchi Sion studied oriental medicine in Tibet when he was a young man. A man who injured his shoulder when a wagon fell on him has come to Amchi from a village 20 kilometers away. Amchi Sion treats any sickness with his hot iron. That is why Sion is respected as an Amchi who cures all illnesses and injuries. There is a large hospital equipped with Western medical systems in Ladakh. But many people still reportedly depend on Amchi Sion. Snow on the great Pamir mountains melts and becomes mountain streams 
and the river that rises therefrom flows into Ladakh. This is the upper stream of the great Indus River, the mother of civilization. Buddhism must have reached this region traveling up the Indus River. The piece of cloth hanging by the thread is known as taco. Buddhist sutra is printed all over taco. They say the sutras spread all over the world as the wind flaps the taco. We came upon a funeral procession. The funeral service has continued for a whole week and the remains were to be cremated on that day. We were told that the funeral was for an old farm woman. Only men are allowed to join the funeral procession. Women send their deceased off in front of their houses. Led by 80 Buddhist bonzes, the casket with a talismanic flag tied to it follows. The crematory is located on a rocky hill just outside the village. Relatives and villagers say farewell to the deceased and turn back towards the village. The bonzes alone conduct the cremation service. They burn the Buddha picture drawn on a sheet of paper to pray for guidance into the other world. The ceremony is exactly the same as that practiced in esoteric Buddhism in Japan. It consists of burning holy fire. The dead has returned to Mother Earth. This is a Buddhist stupa containing the remains of a high priest. On the rocky wilderness just outside Lehe stand 108 Buddhist stupas. The number 108 is a significant number in Buddhism as the gong is struck 108 times on the New Year's Eve and the rosary is strung with 108 beads.
The temple is known as Gompa in Ladakh. It means a quiet place in Tibetan. Twenty-one bonzes live in this gompa. It is one of the smaller temples in Ladakh. Eight o'clock in the morning. Bonces gather together at the trumpet shell call. In Ladakh, a little boy of six assuming cloistered life, remains in the temple for the rest of his life, neither marrying, nor drinking alcoholic beverage, nor smoking tobacco, nor eating animal meat. The morning service commences and the morning meal is taken at the same time. The meal, however, consists merely of butter melted into tea. The bonzes drink 20 or 30 cups of this buttered tea. This young acolyte serving tea is named Dorchoi. Dorchoi entered the temple life at the age of nine. A whole year has passed, but he has never visited his family. the number one high priest of this temple. He entered temple life at six. At 14, he studied Buddhist scriptures in Tibet. Dorchoi reveres him like a living Buddha. In the afternoon, Dorchoi left the temple along with the high priest. In the morning, they hold services in the temple and in the afternoon they go visiting and hold services for households. The bonzes repeat their routine duties without a day's rest. In Ladakh, each household maintains a religious service room. The service room is set up on the roof where the view is the best. A flag is hoisted on the roof to tell the villagers that a priest is visiting. It happened to be the eighth anniversary of the death of grandmother of the household.
This is how the house is built. The ground floor is reserved for domestic animals, such as the yaks, cattle, donkeys and sheep, about 30 heads of which are kept and cared for like family members. family lives on the second floor. The mistress of the household sits in front of the fireplace. The fuel is dried cow's dung and a sheep hide bag is used as the bellows. The kitchen forms the center of the interest for the family. The quantity of well-polished tableware indicates the affluence of the household. <laughs> Until about 20 years ago, the system of polygamy, in which one woman served as wife to two brothers, was being practiced in this region. It is also said that one male and one female member of every family had to become Buddhist monk. These systems were based on the need for limiting increase in the number of households since there was not enough land to accommodate increased population. But now that polygamy has been banned, young people have begun leaving the villages to live in the cities. One day we left the town of Lehe and headed west. We wanted to visit Al Chikompa, the oldest Buddhist temple in the Ladakh region. We were informed that magnificent Buddhist artworks were preserved in Al Chikompa. Sven Hedin, who was an avaricious explorer and tried to overlook nothing, had not visited Al Chikompa. We were given to understand that the most secretly preserved treasure house of Buddhist artworks in Ladakh lay dormant there. Seventy kilometers of snow-covered mountain road lay ahead of us, with the temperature down to minus 20 degrees centigrade. Four hours by car were estimated to be needed to reach Al Chigompa. Al Chigompa was built in the 11th century, when Buddhism was at its peak in the Ladakh region. A total of five sacred edifices stand here. The oldest is the Denichi Buddha Shrine. It is a shrine dedicated to Denichi Buddha, who is as familiar to the Japanese as great Buddha images of the Todeji temple in Nara and of the Hasadira temple in Kamukura. On the walls to the right and to the left are drawn huge mandalas covering from the floor to the ceiling. A mandala represents pictorial depiction of countless Buddhas around the center Buddha. Bonzes in training sit before the mandala and try to fathom the profound Buddhistic universe 
through meditation. Our eyes were glued to the figure of Denichi Buddha, depicted at the center of the mandala before us. The Buddha's right hand is enfolding the index finger of the left hand. This is known as Buddha Grimudra, a form of symbolic Buddhist finger sign seen only in Japan and China so far. But here it is, right in front of our very eyes. Mount Koya in Japan. Kongo Buji Temple on Mount Koya. This is the temple built by Kobo Daishi, also known as Kukai, who introduced esoteric Buddhism into Japan from China. Like the mandala at Alchi Gompa, the mandala at Mount Koya depicts Denichi Buddha at the center. Dainichi Buddha, depicted in the Bodhi Agri Mudra pose. Japan's esoteric Buddhism could be traced farther westward from China to Ladakh. This is the three-story temple that represents Alchi Kumpa. Inside, the first and second floors form the stairwell that houses the Buddha images. Figures of the Buddhas are drawn all over the walls, leaving no blank space. On three sides of the place, Buddha images more than five meters tall are standing. These images represent three Bodhisattvas, namely Miroku, Kanon, and Monju. On the garment draped around this Kanon Bosatsu is depicted the palace life in Kashmir. This picture emanates the style of miniature painting of Persia. Miniature painting that blossomed forth in the Islamic world and the beauty born of Indian Buddhism. These are valuable relics spawned by the Silk Road. Going up to the second floor, we come face to face with three bodhisattvas surrounded by mandala buddhas. The walls of the third floor are covered with mandalas from the floor to the ceiling. Above Manju Bodhisattva stands a lady bodhisattva known as Tara.
Tara was introduced into Japan and is drawing faithful followers as Tara Bosatsu. It is the Buddha that saves people from hardships and disasters. Buddhism spread, even as the great bow tree spread wider as new branches took root. At the Alchi Gompa we saw many things that linked up with Buddhism in Japan. The brilliantly colourful world of Buddhas was found preserved in the ancient temples standing in the desolate rocky hill in Ladakh. We, the material gathering team, were fortunate. We have heard that Alchi Gompa closed its gates to all cameras with our excursion shooting as the last. The snow was beginning to melt when we chance to feel the brightness of sunshine. It is the first day of spring on the Tibetan calendar. The sound of the flute is calling to the people from the temple on the rocky hill. The long-awaited spring festival is about to begin. The long winter is coming to an end. The villagers, all decked up for the occasion, unwittingly quicken their pace. It is a spring welcoming festival, held with all-out participation of the villagers and temple bonzes. Ladakh, the priest occupying the highest position, appears before the people once a year, on this day only. He is the living Buddha of Ladakh, the Buddhist kingdom. On this day only, the sacred hall changes into a stage.
irate Buddhas drawn on the temple walls. The spring festival also is the day these Buddhas are resurrected from the dark world. Bonzes, taking the place of the Buddhas, who have escaped out of the wall paintings, dance like mad people. The festival held once a year is a long-waited day of stage performances for the boy Bonzes. The climax of the festival comes at driving out of evil spirits. This doll, known as Dao, symbolizes the evil spirit that inhabits the human heart. A Buddha in the guise of a deer chases away the evil spirit by cutting the doll into pieces. The doll is made of wheat flour and animal internals are stuffed in it. With offerings made to the Buddhas thrown into fire, the festival that has lasted for two days comes to an end.
the people of Ladakh, who have had evil spirits driven off and have their hearts cleansed by the Buddha, observe the coming of spring. Embosomed deep in the great Pamir mountains, Ladakh proved to be a legendary land still preserving Buddhism.